Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to tackle the big problem of doing logarithmic differentiation. These things are really great for when you have, like, say, uh, exponential things or really complicated functions, uh, but they can be a little bit tricky to work through. So let me give you some real good tips on how logarithmic differentiation is going to work. Uh, when you're doing something like logarithmic differentiation, the key is really taking the logarithm of both sides. Now that may be a little intimidating, but trust me, it will make things simpler uh, when you do that logarithm. And the reason why it's going to make things simpler is because next you're going to work with your laws of logarithms to really expand it out and turn it into something much simpler. Now, after you've expanded it out into lots of addition, uh, maybe some multiplication, now comes to the part where we actually take its derivative. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult steps because it really needs uh, you to know all of your derivative rules. The key uh, ones that are really helpful for do doing this is knowing your implicit derivative rules. That'll take care of our uh, y side. You'll have to know your chain rule really well. And of course, you'll need to know the derivative of logarithms. Uh, just have those down pat so if you come across the derivative of a logarithm, you can immediately take it. Um, if you need to brush up on your rules of derivatives, not a bad idea, but it will really help you when doing this particular step. Now the last step in doing logarithmic differentiation is really just to isolate your derivative component and replace any y's with the original function um, because we, we will have the original function that we're starting off with. Now, I'll do two examples of this so you get an idea of how it works, but again, we want to make it simpler, take our derivative, and isolate our uh, derivative in the end. So we're going to give this a go by finding the derivative of y equals x raised to the power of e to the x. And of course that looks like a fairly uh, complicated function. It's raised to a power and that power is another function in itself. But we're going to start off and we're actually going to just take the derivative of both sides. So I'm sorry, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of y and I'm going to take the na natural log of x to e to the x. Now immediately, it looks a little bit more complicated, but because of our laws of logarithms, it's going to start to simplify. And over here is really where it's going to shine. So natural log of y on the left side, nothing really changing over here. Over here, since I have a power uh, inside that logarithm, I can bring it out front and write this as e to the x multiplied by natural log of x. So just by taking the natural log and following its rules, I've now turned uh, my exponential problem into something that really just has some multiplication in it. Okay, on to the next step. Now it's time to actually take that derivative. You want to take the derivative of both sides of this, and you're taking the derivative with respect to x. On the left side here, it means we'll have to do this derivative implicitly. So the derivative of the outside is simply one over uh, whatever the inside is, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, so y prime. So I have 1 divided by y multiplied by the derivative of y. For my right side, I have things being multiplied, so we'll need to use a product rule in there. I'll need to know my derivative for e to the x and my derivative for natural log uh, while I'm doing that product rule, but it is possible. So let's go ahead and run through that. So I have the first function just as it is, multiplied by the derivative of the second function, that's our 1 over x, plus now I have my second function, natural log of x, multiplied by the derivative of the first, so e to the x. So product rule, derivatives of e to the x, derivative of natural log, all that's working in there. And uh, I might just take just one more step to go ahead and factor out that e to the x. I guess it's not entirely necessary, but it will make things look a little bit cleaner. So things are looking pretty good. I've, I've gone ahead and taken my derivative. Uh, but now I just want to go ahead and isolate this y prime part because that's really what I'm after. I'm really interested in the derivative of y. So we'll solve this by removing or, or moving anything that's on the other side here to the right side. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y. That should isolate it just fine. And now we are almost there. We've almost found the derivative. I guess technically we have found the derivative, but, but really it doesn't feel good to have that y in there. Um, and good news is we can replace it because we have the original function just sitting up there. We know what y is, so we'll go ahead and replace that in. So y prime equals, we'll go ahead and put our original function there, e to the power of e to the x multiplied by e to the x, which is multiplied by 1 divided by x plus natural log of x. 
So as you can see, there are some key components in here. You want to take your natural log. You want to take your derivatives very carefully. Make sure you know your rules for those. Isolate the y prime, and you will have your derivative. Let's give this one more try with a different function, just to show you that it, it works in a lot of other situations where you might not necessarily have an exponential function, but the same steps are still there. So for this one, we're going to find the derivative of y equals x squared plus 1 all divided by x minus 1. And the thing that I like about this one is you could find the derivative simply using the quotient rule. Of course, we have a function divided by a function. Quotient rule definitely applies here. But if you know how to do logarithmic differentiation, you can also approach the problem in that way. So let's go ahead and do that. First step, we are going to take the natural log of both sides. So natural log of just y and the natural log of all of this junk over here. So x squared plus 1 all divided by x minus 1. Now remember, the reason why we're doing that is so that we can make this side much simpler, so that we don't necessarily have to attack it with some complicated rules. And one thing that can really help me with my uh, laws of logarithms is if I have something divided inside my log, that can split up into subtraction. So I have the natural log of the top piece minus the natural log of the bottom piece. So now all of a sudden I've turned a quotient, you know, something that has division, into a problem that now just has subtraction, and it's going to be easier for me to take that derivative. All right, things are looking good. Um, I can't really simplify this any farther. I don't have any laws of logarithms that split up addition or subtraction when they're inside the log, so it's time to take that derivative. Over here, the derivative, we're doing this implicitly, so I have 1 over y multiplied by y prime. And now over here, to take its derivative, I'm going to have to start using my chain rule. So the derivative of natural logs, well, the derivative of the outside is 1 divided by, here's my inside function, x squared plus 1, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is just a 2x. So that takes care of the derivative of that. On to the next one, derivative of the outside, 1 over, inside just as it is, multiplied by the derivative of the inside, uh, that'd be just a 1. Okay, so that's looking really good. All right, so now I have 1 divided by y, multiplied by y prime, and over here looks like I have a 2x all divided by an x squared plus 1 minus 1 all over an x minus 1. So I've taken the derivative, we're getting closer, but of course we really want to get this y prime all by itself. So I'll just uh, multiply both sides by y so I can better isolate it. Then I'll move this y to the right side. And it's being multiplied by both of these expressions. So I'm just going to write it like that. And of course, the very last step is I'm going to replace y with the original function. I know what it is. And then we'll have our derivative. So the original function was x squared plus 1, all divided by x minus 1. So all of that is now being multiplied by this. And we have our derivative. So make sure you're really up on your laws of logarithms. Make sure you know your rules for derivatives really well. And this can be a powerful tool to help you find derivatives of some really complicated and ugly looking functions. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.